Hello again, this is Harold Waters with OSU Extension. I'm a field specialist for agronomic systems. And this time we'll talk about soil sampling and uh, methods to get quality results. So why do we soil test? Uh, we do to improve uh, crop production and lower input costs. Uh, the goal would be to uh, maximize our yield with the uh, nutrients we have, but also not over apply, and so therefore lower input costs. And the data also shows that uh, water quality impacts can be tied to soil test results, particularly for phosphorus. So our goal on why we soil test is to develop fertilizer recommendations. Uh, we want to increase our nutrient use efficiency. And then we also want to improve our crop production, and hopefully at a lower input cost. So soil testing discussion items for today. Uh, keys to taking a quality soil sample to account for variability, increase repeatability of the test, then we also want to be able to assure soil tests that are comparable from sample to sample. There is a link there at the bottom of the slide uh, for uh, a list of soil testing labs that we have here in Ohio and neighboring states. Uh, this list is also available at, from a link at the end of the uh, segment we have on videos. So the goals of our quality uh, of a quality soil test. So we want to obtain an accurate representation of the fertility levels within a particular particular field and so there is variability we want to determine or, or document that variability that's out there in that field. The other thing to keep in mind uh, keys to taking a quality soil test is we want to keep the sample area small. Uh, as we get larger and larger um, field sizes or, or segments of the field we're representing it really points out here in this little calculation or little representation how, how small of a sample we're taking. So we collect typically a one pint of soil, that's one pound of soil for our sample that we send off to lab. Do keep in mind that an acre furrow slice is a 6.7 inch deep soil slice that equals roughly one, or rather two million pounds of soil. So 6.7 inch deep plow depth slice of soil um, on an acre is two million pounds of soil. So a 10 acre uh, size of uh, sampling area is at 20 million pounds that we're sampling from and for 25 acres which is somewhat the maximum that would be recommended uh, to take is 50 million pounds so this one pint of soil that one pound of soil would be representative representative of a 50 million pounds of soil so we want to do a good job as best we can so divide your fields uh, we would like to have as I said a uh, sampling area that's less than 25 acres in size we want to divide it up in such a way that it makes sense. So uh, when we make those divisions, we would then use a zigzag pattern to collect samples. If we have a history of banding uh, fertilizer in the past, we want to increase those number of cores. Instead of um, 10 to 15, perhaps go up to 20 to 25 samples. We also want to avoid sampling for six months after manure or two months after a fertilizer application. And if we wish to repeat in the same area, uh, we use a GPS tool of some kind to mark the sample points for follow-up sampling. So ways to divide that landscape into those representative areas, we want to look at yield data perhaps, certainly aerial imagery, uh, soil type uh, differences certainly can change uh, the way we might want to soil test. Topography, field history, you know, where were the old fence rows, where were the pasture lines, things like that. Then other factors we might want to uh, consider are crop rotations. Uh, that may also be from going from small fields to large fields, might have been different rotations in the past. Have there been historic manure applications, uh, differences in fertilizer, fertilizer application methods? And then are there other areas, you know, perhaps it should be excluded and sampled separately? Uh, I have one a suggestion I've heard from one of our producers was that he samples the ends of the field, so the, the turn rows on each end. And what he's learned over time is that yields are down there a little bit. And so as a result, his fertility levels are higher. So he really uh, does sample them separately and then treats them separately. And then we want to be consistent in our soil core depth. Uh, the uh, Tri-State Fertility Guide recommendations were based on 8-inch uh, depth of sample. And if we change from that, we need to make the lab aware of the fact that we were perhaps taking a 6- or 7-inch sample instead, and then they can account for that. But we want to be uh, consistent in depth when we do take our samples and then from year to year even be consistent. And again, as I said, we want to take 10 to 15 cores per sample area. And then um, if perhaps we want to, uh, we don't do much in the way of tillage, 
perhaps we want to take a 0 to 4 inch sample uh, to assess uh, the acidity of the soil. And the other thing, the concern perhaps in a uh, pasture area or a livestock area, you know, we want to avoid or at least treat areas separately, uh, perhaps close to barns or sheds, uh, under uh, shaded loafing areas and winter feed areas, um, manure areas and horse pastures where they tend to clump up, uh, close to water source or close to stationary mineral feeders. Again, our goal here is to take uh, consistent samples divide up the landscape in such a way that we know that we've got somewhat of uniformity within our sample area and then to do it consistent as far as depth goes as well.